This is not a substantive motion about the conduct of any member. It is therefore not in order to make personal criticisms of the conduct of any honourable or right honourable member. I now call Deputy Leader Angela Rayner to ask her urgent question. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. To ask the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster if he will make a statement on his department's processes for vetting ministerial appointments and managing conflicts of interest. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Lady, right Honourable Lady, for her question, to which it is a pleasure to respond. Starting with ministerial appointments, appointments made to His Majesty's Government are a matter solely for the Prime Minister, in line with his constitutional position as the Sovereign's principal adviser and the head of the Government. It is for the Prime Minister to recommend individuals for appointment. In considering potential appointments, the Prime Minister may receive advice from the Civil Service on matters of propriety and potential conflicts of interest. The Civil Service has no role in approving or vetoing appointments, as appointments are a matter for the Prime Minister. It would not be appropriate for me to comment further on the advice that may be given during the appointments process. It is critical that all Prime Ministers are able to receive advice in confidence. I would not want to do anything to erode that ability. Once an appointment is made, the process for the management of conflicts of interest and potential conflicts is clear and robust and follows the processes set out in the Ministerial Code. It is the responsibility of all Ministers to ensure that no conflict arises or could reasonably be perceived to arise between their role and their private interests, financial or otherwise. That is ultimately incumbent on the individual, and this is clearly set out in the Ministerial Code. Ministers should declare and manage potential conflicts of interest, working with their Permanent Secretary and the Independent Advisor on Ministers' interests. They are under an ongoing duty to further declare relevant changes to their interests. Honourable members will be aware that the Prime Minister has appointed Sir Laurie Magnus as his independent adviser on ministers' interests. Sir Laurie will be taking forward the work on the declaration of ministers' interests in line with his published terms of reference. As the Prime Minister confirmed this morning, the independent adviser will also be conducting an investigation to establish the facts surrounding the matters concerning my right honourable friend, the member for Stratford-upon-Avon, that have been subject to media reports over the weekend. I know that Sir Laurie will bring integrity and rigour to the role of independent adviser, and the outcome of his work will be made public in due course. Yeah. Angela Rayner. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, for granting this urgent question. But we may have a carousel of ministers, but it's the same old excuses yeah. Yeah. every single time. Reports that the then Chancellor of the Exchequer agreed a settlement with the HMRC, including a penalty, raised serious concerns, not just about that case, but standards in this entire government. Can the Minister tell us if the vetting process raised flags to the former Prime Minister about the original appointment, and when exactly did this Prime Minister know? Does he know if and how this conflict of interest was managed? And why was it kept secret, yeah. Mr Speaker? Is there no system in place to prevent a person being actively investigated for unpaid tax being appointed to run the UK's tax system? Yeah. Maybe it's that absurd, Mr Speaker, that no one would ever think it would happen. Yeah. While we understand the confidentiality of the honours process, surely where there's a serving minister is blocked there is an overwhelming case for sounding the alarm. Yep. So did that happen? And where is the report? If not, why is there a lower bar to get into this cabinet than there is to get a knighthood? Yeah. <laughs> Number 10 apparently still doesn't know if other ministers are in dispute over their own taxes. Shame. So what is the Prime Minister doing about it? Last week, he told the House all questions had been answered and he, and he was told that there was no outstanding issues. Yet now, 
the independent adviser is investigating. Ah, yeah. So will he publish the terms of reference? And why does the Prime Minister need an adviser to tell him that this conduct is unethical? Yeah. If this if this breach isn't a breach, if this isn't a breach of the ministerial code, surely the code itself is wrong, Mr. Speaker, and it's the Prime Minister's job to fix it. If the Prime Minister came clean about what he knew and when and took responsibility for the conduct of his own cabinet, would we need yet another investigation into another exactly. member of his top team? Even now, Number 10 says the party chair retains the Prime Minister's full confidence. How can the Prime Minister claim to deliver the integrity, professionalism and accountability that he promised while his Conservative Party chair still sits in his Cabinet? Thank you, Mr Speaker. We follow a proper process under the Ministerial Code. Interests are required to be declared. Uh, they are required to be shared uh, through the ministerial code process and discussed with uh, permanent secretaries. I am absolutely confident that the usual process will have been followed in the appointment process by this Prime Minister for the right honourable gentleman. Uh, and if there are issues to be raised in respect of historic activities, as was suggested by this weekend's press, that is a matter for the independent adviser to look at. And his findings, the summary of his findings, will be published in due course. Integrity, accountability are critical, as is professionalism. And this government will wait and hear the facts before taking decisions based upon those facts. And I think the right honourable lady would do well to do the same. Richard Fuller.